Lenny Sly, RogueWarrior Okay, um, welcome to another video. Today we're launching a new series, and uh, I threw up on uh, Facebook or social media uh, the name of what this series can be called. There's, there was a lot of people that put out some really good names of what the series is called. Um, as of right now, at this time and moment, I do not have a name for this series. So hopefully by the time that I'm done with this, and it's uploaded on YouTube, I will make the determination of what the series is gonna be called. It might be called Aikido, if it hurts, it works. Um, and don't let, the, don't let the title of the series uh, get under your skin too much about, oh, well, Aikido's not supposed to hurt. Well, it is. And that's a whole nother video. I can, it, it would take me an hour to explain it to the majority of people that, that just don't understand the concept of that these techniques are supposed to hurt, especially if you wanna get results from them. Um, this is also, this series is not going to coincide with Aikido the way that does not work. Um, they're not going hand in hand, even though I might have, might have given the, uh, the idea that it is, that it's not. I'm not gonna be showing techniques in that series of how this doesn't work, how that doesn't work, how this doesn't work, how that doesn't work, and then in the other series, I'm gonna show you how that works, that works, that works, and that works. I'm not doing a video on what doesn't work, and then doing a video on what does work. In this case, I am going to show you, okay, what does work off of Munetsuki Hijinage, okay? I'm gonna show you that, but let's be really clear about something. This video series is not going to be about the techniques that don't work traditionally. There might be some that I might do, but the majority of the stuff that I'm going to show with what does work um, is probably going to come to a, a, a great surprise to most of you because it's not going to look like your typical Aikido that you're going to see in the dojo on the mat with whatever style that you do. Um, Unfortunately, that's just the case because the, the majority, the vast majority of traditional Aikido techniques would never work in the real world, okay? They just wouldn't. Um, there's far too many to do uh, to make videos on, so that's why I'm being very selective on what I'm doing right now um, with those videos. Um, with that being said, you, you guys really need to take, most of you guys, for the comments and stuff on those other videos have been fantastic, but still, there's still far too many of you out there that keep bringing up the whole MMA thing, okay? This is not about MMA, okay? Well, do that against an MMA guy. You know, that guy, will, you know, that guy's gonna smash that guy. I really don't fucking care what you think when it comes to that, okay? It has nothing to do with fighting an MMA fighter. It doesn't, period, it doesn't. Get it out of your head. You guys are, you and a lot of the Aikido world is in very much denial right now of what my capabilities are and what I can do, okay? And that's completely fine, because you guys don't know me, and what I present here is what I allow you to see, okay? That's pretty cut and dry at that point, okay? Obviously, I'm not gonna sit there and, and make a biography about Lenny Sly and all of my years of martial arts experience, because Aikido is not the only thing that I've studied, okay? So, you guys need to understand that. Okay? And what I'm going to be doing in this series, I'm going to be showing you Aikido technique that does work. Okay, There is going to be some Tenshin application that is going to be incorporated into some of these techniques. Okay, As well as probably some traditional stuff that you might be familiar with or might not be familiar with. But the most part is this is going to be showing you the brutal reality of how Aikido will really work if you know what to apply, how to apply it, and when to apply it. Okay, when you think about MMA fighters, let's go back to a second. When you think about MMA fighters, <coughs> they train in striking, they train in grappling, they train in submissions. Okay, these guys are athletes. They train to fight another trained fighter for amateur status that leads into pro status, which leads into a lot of dead presidents if you're really good and you become famous and make a lot of money off of it. Okay. That's why they do it, okay? Yeah, guys train in MMA just for the health aspects, you know, to learn some self-defense against the average everyday guy, absolutely. But the majority of people wanna get to the show. They all wanna be in the spotlight in the octagon in UFC 975, whatever number that they're at, okay? So they train for that. So they train in 
jabs, crosses, hooks, body shots, mitt work, bag work. Um, uh, they train cardio like, like crazy. Why? Because these are all things that are going to work for them against their opponent in the octagon. Okay? They train for what works in sport. Period. Aikido people, okay, and I'm, I'm still really just dumbfounded on how you guys train in this method of what some people like to call self-defense, um, especially on the traditional side, and there's nothing practical about it. Okay, I've said this before and I've said this a thousand times. If you're not training practically, okay, and you have to use this out on the street, it's never going to work, okay? If you're training in the traditional form and you need to use this one day out there to protect yourself, your concepts and principles and everything else that you guys live and swear by, okay, is not going to transition into the reality of a street encounter. It's just not. Plain and simple. I say this all the time to my students. I've said this many times before on video. The whale you train in the dojo is the whale you're going to defend yourself on the street. You need to be able to do that. What's the point of training in traditional stuff, in traditional technique, if it doesn't equate to results in the real world? Okay? Munetsuki Hijinage is a really great example. That's a traditional form of technique. I completely showed how it didn't work. And some of the comments that I got from that were, you know, yo, Lenny hates Aikido, blah, blah. I don't hate Aikido. I've been doing Aikido for 27 years, going on 28 years. I did traditional Aikido for 16, okay? But that was overlapped with tension Aikido. So when I was on my way out of, of traditional, that's when I was starting my journey learning Tenshin Aikido. So I'm setting the record straight. I'm going on 28 years of practicing Aikido technique. I, that's a long time. So, don't be fooled by hearing, oh, he's trained in Aikido for 16 years and that's it. No, it's going on 28. So, the record stands, 28 years of Aikido training, amongst many other things that I've done, okay, with martial arts. When you're training with this stuff, you need to be able to make this work for you. The traditional stuff does not work, okay? It just doesn't work. So all you people out there that have this misconception that I hate Aikido, uh, kind of sounds like to me like you hate Aikido because you're in denial of the fact that I'm proving on video that a lot of these things don't work. And I just got started. Okay. So what I'm going to show you today with Rod, I, I'm going to show you a way and how you can make Munetsuki Hiji Nage work. And that's going to incorporate some tension Aikido. Okay. And it's gonna show all of the elements, all the concepts, everything, the principles. I will go through all that and I will show it to you on how it works, okay? So, just to touch base back on the original technique as he punches in, resist with the Hiji Nage. So if I do this traditionally, this is not going to work, okay? No one's gonna step and punch you like that on the street. They might, but I doubt it. It's gonna be more of this body shot. You might get some guy that tries to lunge forward and hit you because you're at a distance. Any of that stuff can go, but you always have to think, you always have to remember that that punch isn't gonna stay out there. They're gonna retract the punch. And once they retract, they're in a better position to resist than out here, okay? Just the laws of leverage does not bode well for them when their hand is out here. Using leverage, I don't care how strong you are, they can snap your elbow, they can move you, they can do all kinds of things. But once you retract, it changes everything, okay? So as he punches again, okay, move over a little. <clears throat> as he punches again with Munetsky, so if he takes a step forward and I try to do this, it's not gonna work. So now I'm gonna incorporate a low end ukanagashi with a sayunage to his face. So as he does that, I'm doing this right into his face, right away, okay? Now Rod knows to move. Because in our dojo, you don't want to get punched, grabbed, kicked, or taken to the ground unless it's on your own terms. Most Aikido people, somebody made this comment and, and somebody stated a comment, made a comment, whatever, one of the videos how most Aikido people have never been punched in the face and that is correct. 
right? Because you guys don't train for violence. You don't train for competition. You train for all these other different reasons. Obviously, I'm, we're talking about this and discussing this. You're not going to be used to getting hit in the face. The average person isn't going to be getting used to, or not going to be used to getting hit in the face. So when you get back fisted or backhand in the face, square on the nose, your nose is going to probably make your eyes start to water. You're not going to be used to it. You're going to be very uncomfortable. Chances are you're not going to turn your head this way with this hand punching. You're going to turn away when you get hit, okay? Which is going to completely take your mind off of what the attack is. So even if you punch and pull back, once you get biffed in the face, this is a distant memory. You're no longer thinking about this. And then at that point, that's where we take this arm and we apply Hiji Nage. Okay, now Hiji Nage is an elbow throw, using this to throw with the elbow, right? Who's to say you can't use something else and apply the same concept and principle for Hiji Nage? Whoever said it has to be your arm that you're doing this making this application happen, right? So he comes and he punches. Now, don't take you, Kevin. With us too, usually when this happens, Kowski happens because of the honest attack that we give, if you don't move, you get hit. Your fault if you get hit. So I'm telling Rod right now, don't move. So ultimately, he's gonna get hit. But I'll be nice about this. Okay, so he goes and punches with this, Stay right, here, right into his face. You pop him in the face. Look at how he's going on this angle. He's going across this way. So I hit, come back up. So this ukanagashi movement, the other hand comes up on top, bam, back fist, whack him right in the face. At that point, once you do that, if he's resisting here and this happens, this is gonna start to loosen up, boom. Now from here, I'm in this position where I can grab on top of his arm, I can grab underneath his arm. So once I hit, this would make more sense to grab this right away. Why would I want to throw that way? So I take a step back. Now I'm in his shikaku. This strength right here is going to be virtually impossible for him to resist because this is going against his body positioning his muscular strength is not going to be able to stop my movement. I don't care how much you can stay there. How strong you can cable crossovers or pec deck in the gym or flat dumbbell flies, your pectoral muscle is being compromised right now. When this gets stretched, your pectoral is being stretched. And if it gets stretched hard and abruptly, you could possibly tear, tear somebody's pec that way. If you've never had a torn muscle before, it hurts like a motherfucker. It doesn't feel good. So once this happens and you hit, you grab this. Now, the elbow I use to go across my body. Relax for a second. I have the elbow go across my body, so now I'm using leverage against the elbow. Hiji Nage, still. So when I'm here, he's in front of my leg. Once I Tenkan, he is going to turn and be behind my leg this keeps going. As that keeps going, I can scoot this leg out a tad and pull across my body. And guess what? He's taking the fall. Because once I put this obstacle in front of him, he cannot walk away. He's going to get tripped. Basically, this turns into a leg sweep. And once that happens and he can't take a step forward, he's face planting in the ground or he's being flipped over depending how hard this torque is now happening. Okay, so again, so right from here, strike, grab, and throw. Okay, now I know some of you are gonna go, where's the resistance, where's the resistance? He's falling for you. Here's, <coughs> here's the thing. The strike, because I like him, I'm not actually hitting him in the face. Take into account, that if I hit him in the face for real, everything that he has going on goes right out the window. And the technique becomes even more applicable and even more dangerous. Now, for some of you Aikido people out there, oh, well, you know, you're not supposed to hurt people. Well, here, here's the other thing for you guys. This can be done with the love, peace, and harmony aspect of it as well. You don't have to leg sweep if you don't want to. 
You can take this nice and easy. Right? So you can amp this up depending on the situation. You can do this all nice and easy and apply and let them walk right out of it and let them roll. Okay? Hey, okay, again. So you can move right into that and then turn and let them roll. And you have your love, peace, and harmony aspect, that concept, those principles. Or you can turn this into something a lot harder and throw. And the end result is you have something that works. So you have both sides of the coin here. You got the love, peace, and harmony. Let them roll out of it based off of the circumstances. And then you have the other way. That can be pretty devastating to somebody that doesn't know how to fall. Okay? Especially when you incorporate a leg sweep and you stick that out there. They're never going to see that coming. Most people, especially in Aikido, don't pay attention from the waist down when it comes to throws. We're always trying to get Kazushi. Kazushi, you have to affect their upper body. So you take their balance. You're not thinking about taking their balance by sweeping out a leg. Because if you sweep out their leg, you can't do any other techniques half the time. Because now they're falling to the ground. So how are you going to get Koku Nage if you're sweeping out the leg? How are you going to get Kota Gaishi if you're sweeping out the leg? If you're not already transitioned into Kota Gaishi, how are you going to be able to do that? You're not going to be able to do it. The leg sweep is something that subtly happens that you don't see until you feel it and it's way too late. All right, one more time. Let's go from here. So as this happens, Fukunagashi, huh? One more time, punch. So it's Fukunagashi right into the face. Now I get behind him. Once I hit him, I grab. Now I'm behind him. Now I'm grabbing with one hand so you can see this, but you want to use two. So as you're torquing this against the body, okay, you could actually move this right into a headlock if you wanted at that point as well. If the resistance is still there and you're going here, the resistance is still here, go right up to the head. Now you have that, okay? So you can transition into that as well. <coughs> so if this happens to get real tight, move on to the next best thing. What if you can't do this? What if this guy, maybe you didn't hit him hard. Maybe you got that Aikido guy that can take a punch to the face and this happens. Now you just come right across the chin and you get that lock. Once you have that lock, this is going to loosen up. Now you apply this across your body. Now you have the Hiji Nage still. Then you can move and you can throw. So it's all setting up. Moving from one technique to the next. That rod's laughing. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming, did you? Most people don't. But there you have it. There's so many things that you can do. Oh, back to what I was gonna show. So as this happens, you're moving through. I'm in the Shikaku, I'm also affecting his Hasoji, his center line. So now I'm affecting his balance even more. Okay, so there's your Kazushi for all you Aikido bunnies that need to see that. Once this happens, now I'm here. Now I'm there. You okay? Okay, so you could actually do that as well. So moving through to this, right from here, and then pull. And you can throw them off balance that way. Even though it's not Hijinage, but it still works. Right in, here, I'm completely behind him at that point. If I really want to be brutal about this, I take him down to the ground and go down with him. Mm -hmm. And land right on him at that point. And then you can apply arm lock, whatever. Grab his hair, slam his face in the mat. Whatever. So you have a whole plethora of things that you can do. So one more time. So the idea of this, right through, take that. Last one. So the idea of this, right away. And if you wanted to, you can come up underneath with this and pull. Throw them that way as well. Okay? Hey. So there's your practical application of Unetsuki Hijinage. That's how I would make it work. So before you guys start nailing me with all these comments, that wouldn't work, this wouldn't work, watch the video. Do it exactly the way how I showed you, using the principles as I described, the, the movements how I described them. Go practice it. And then when something doesn't work for you, 
then come back. Say, hey, this didn't work, that didn't work, this didn't work, that didn't work. That's fair game then, no problem. But instead of watching this going, that doesn't work and blah, 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 blah. You know what? Don't knock it until you try it, as they say. Go give it a shot. See what you can get from it. The application's there. Key points, atemi, number one. Actually, deflection, atemi. You gotta distract them. Once the, and the, the sayunage is not a kokunage, it's a sayunage back of the hand. Turn this into a back fist, snapping back fist, bam. You're gonna get a lot of results from that, okay? Again, the attack isn't really, it's not a practical form of attack. This is just to show you how you can take a traditional movement and make it work, okay? So if you guys liked the video, hit a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell icon to the right of it. We'll give you all the notifications when we post a new video, you'll get notified on that so you'll see when we post new videos. Um, yes, absolutely, leave a comment down below, but you know, watch the video a couple of times, go and practice it. See for yourself, okay? What do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose and everything to gain, okay? So that's it for us today. We'll see you next time here on uh, The Road Warriors. Thanks for watching.